It's such a great honor, Grant Crawford, and your dear wife Sue and your family, to be able to share this message with you and your men. I want to say to you that your church is very dear to my heart. And you know, Grant, I remember you as a university student. And I really mean that, like it was yesterday. Where has the time gone? I remember when Ray Oliver used to invite me down to your church and I would speak at the evening service. I remember you in the front row, you and Sue. I don't even know if you were married then. <laughs> anyway, you still look young, don't worry. <clears throat> but you gave me an opportunity when very few other people ever did. You really did. And for that, I'm eternally grateful and I thank you for that. You let me loose on your people, you could have lost your whole congregation. <laughs> but you didn't. So thank you so much. And thank you for the honor of being able to address your men. As you know, it's what God's called me to. Yes, I preach the gospel to everybody. But I have a heart for men. Because men are in the fire at the moment. And I'm really trusting that this message is going to strengthen the men because I'm going to tell you about the greatest man, greatest man's man that has ever lived. And his name is Jesus. It's a beautiful, beautiful winter's day. There is not a cloud in the sky. I don't think I've ever seen the sky so clear without clouds. I want to say to you, my dear friend, I don't know where you are at the moment, whether you're still struggling with this lockdown, but Jesus Christ never changes. The Bible says He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. If you can listen very carefully, you might even hear that dove. There's a dove singing in the trees. You know, the Lord is not contained by a virus. He's not contained by a war. He's not contained about anything because... He is God. I want to speak to you today about the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. D Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. That's who I want to speak to you today about. He loves you so much that He died for you on the cross of Calvary. He has marks in His hands and in His feet and in his side, which he took for you and for me. The devil tried to kill him and he failed. Three days later, Jesus, the Christ, rose from the dead. And that is why my confidence is not in man. My confidence is not in vaccinations. My confidence is not in man's feeble promises. My confidence is in the man called Jesus Christ. So if you'll go with me to the Word of God, to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses, and this is an account of what happened to Jesus and His disciples at the Lake Galilee. Gennesaret, as it's called, the Sea of Tiberias. It is 21 kilometers long. It is 13 kilometers wide. It is extremely deep and very prone to storms. Now, this is how it goes. Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 23. Now, when he got into the boat, that's Jesus and his disciples, they followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, a great storm, so that the boat was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And then his disciples came to him and they woke him up and they said, Lord, save us. We are perishing. How do you feel today? Do you feel that maybe you're perishing? Have you lost a loved one that has died? Have you been unemployed? Is your business gone bankrupt? Have you lost your vision? Have you maybe lost your first love? Well, this program today is to reintroduce you maybe to the man from Galilee, Jesus, the Son of God. We are perishing. And then he said to them, 
and maybe he's saying that to you today. Why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Verse 27. And so the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Who is this man? Oh, folks, he's not just a man. He is the greatest man that has ever lived. And he's not dead. He's still alive. You know that all the other faiths, and I'm not going down that road. I'm not into the mud slinging game. But all those other faiths can take you to a shrine and they can show you the remains, the bones of their gods who have died. But if you go to Jerusalem and you go to Gethsemane and you go to the tomb, you'll find that it is empty. There are no bones there because he's not dead. He is alive. You see, when I got saved 41 years ago, it wasn't an organization that saved me. It wasn't even a denomination that saved me. It was a man that saved me. And I get tears in my eyes just telling you this. I fell in love with the Savior of the world. And I am more in love with Him today than I was then. Why? Because I know Him better today then I knew him then. He is, the, he is the fairest of the fair. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright morning star. He is the friend of sinners. He's the great plowman. He's the shepherd of the sheep. He is Jesus. And he means everything to me. And I hope you'll be able to say that as well at the end of the program when I pray for you because he is desperate to help you. He is concerned because you are so fearful. He is saying, why are you afraid? I promised you, Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Why are you afraid? Of what are you afraid? You see, the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never pass away. Who is the word? He is Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. There are three who bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Who's the Word? His name is Jesus, the Son of God. Everything you see here, He made with one word. Why? That's why He rebuked the disciples. Why are you afraid? O ye of little faith, why are you fearful? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. If we look at the other Gospels, that's when Peter melted. He said, who, are, who is this man that even the weather obeys him? Now, I want to tell you a little story. I have had the same experience many years ago. If you just look down the road. There's a green stripe there. That is the boundary of our farm. See? And uh, it was on an April day, and the sky was like it is now. There wasn't even a cloud the size of a man's fist. Okay? And my foreman, Simeon Bengal, was burning a firebreak. And the firebreak got away from him and went into some brushwood. Remember, we had bought the farm. It was overgrown. And there was just heaps of brushwood everywhere. And this was a mountain of brushwood that had been there for years. And tree stumps. And there was a howling wind coming from the north, going that way, to the south. And the fire break, the fire jumped into the brushwood. And an absolute inferno started. And I don't want to exaggerate. It was so hot that we couldn't get within 10 meters of the fire. It was so hot. I had nothing in those days. I just arrived from Zambia via Swaziland and uh, my whole fighting, uh, firefighting equipment <laughs> amounted to one 210 litre drum and a hose pipe on the end of it, which was uh, affixed to a little tractor I had. That's all I had. And I was so afraid 
that the fire was going to jump across this very fence, this fence, and into these beautiful pine trees behind us. I was absolutely petrified. So I got in my pickup and I shot down to the house. We still had that little pole and dogger house. And I said to Jill, Jill, call the neighbors. In those days, we used to have the wind-up phone, you know, two shorts and one long. And we got all of the neighbors and they came like they always do. They came over here. I had farmers everywhere. We could not put the fire out. It was too intensive. We were trying to get the water to the fire. It was too hot. And they held on and they held on. It was the day before Good Friday. I will never forget it. I'd given my life to Jesus two weeks before. I was a brand new Christian. I still had the wrapping paper around me. <laughs> okay, but I'd met this man called Jesus. And he transformed my life, folks. And I hope he's done the same for you. Transformed my life. So now we didn't know what to do. By 11 o'clock, this fire was getting worse. The wind was getting worse. And I was worried about it jumping in. If it had jumped into this farm, we would have walked off the farm just with a shirt on our backs. And I mean that. I had a wife and three little kids, and she was pregnant with my fourth child. I never forget it as long as I live. I get quite emotional just thinking about it. By 11 o'clock, the farmers came to me and they said to me, Angus, I'm terribly sorry, man. We have to go. You know, tomorrow's a public holiday. We have to pay our staff and we have to leave. And I just said, thank you. What could, else could I say? Thank you very much. And one by one, they started leaving. The fire was still a raging inferno. I was there with my 210 liter drum with a hose pipe on the end, which could do nothing. I was working next to a, 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 my, one of my tractor drivers. His name was Le Zondi. He was a Zulu. I said to Le, Le, I'm going to pray now. I'm going to ask the Lord, God, to bring rain. He looked at me and he shook his head. He said, Ngaga. There is no rain now. The rainy season is over. There's no clouds in the sky. And the wind is coming from the wrong side. It's not going to rain. I said, it is. I said, Jesus said, call unto me. And I will answer you. I'm calling unto Jesus. But you know what I had to do? And maybe one of you guys have to do this as well. Maybe you all have to do this. In fact, I think you should do it. In fact, I'm going to give you a chance at the end of this program to do it. What is that? To humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. If you humble yourself, he says, he will raise you up. And so if we look at John chapter 12, verse 32, the Lord Jesus says, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. As simple as that. And you know what I did? I actually got down on my knees, just like this, in front of all those people, in the dust, in front of my staff, in front of my neighbors. They probably thought I'd really lost it now because they'd heard I'd become a Christian. And in the middle of the dust and the wind and the fire, I said, Lord Jesus, I have given my life to you. I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. You are the weatherman. I want to ask you, Lord, to change the wind and to bring rain and put this fire out. Otherwise, I am done and dusted and I have got a wife and children. That's how I prayed. Please, Lord, I'm asking you by faith. Amen. Now, I don't tell lies anymore, folks. <laughs> I'm a Christian now. I want to tell you that when I got up, within a couple of minutes, out of a clear sky, God is my witness, I heard a shot of lightning, lightning, correct, shoop, and then a rumble of thunder. Do, 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 do. That's right. The wind from the north stopped. It turned around, and the wind started coming up from the south. And with that wind came clouds, rolling clouds. 
and within probably half an hour, a gentle drizzle descended on this farm. Who is this man that even the waves and the wind obey him? That's what Peter asked. Surely he is Jesus, the son of the living God. So I'm not preaching something that I read about. I am telling you about what I experienced. You know, I looked at my driver, Les Zondi. <laughs> I'll never forget it. His eyes were like saucers. He could not believe it. He just, he, he didn't even speak. How? God has got power. And you know, folks, a gentle drizzle started falling on the farm. And then the farmers, the, the ones that were left, they came up to me, Angus, you're a very lucky man. Of course, we know it had nothing to do with luck, did we? It had to do with Jesus, the weatherman, the miracle worker, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lion of Judah. And so I said, thank you so much, guys. God bless you. You know, the next day was Good Friday. Jill, my wife, went to the little church in Great Town where we got saved with my children. And I stayed here on the farm with my little firefighting apparatus on the back of my tractor. And I drove around that fire. And slowly but surely, that gentle, not heavy rain, put that fire out completely. You know, I was laughing. I was crying. I was overwhelmed. It's happened to me a number of times. I have no right ever to doubt the Lord Jesus Christ. No right. He is not a figmentation of my mind. He is a reality. He is more real to me than you watching this program. I really mean that with all my heart. And I want to encourage you today to put your trust firmly in the Lord Jesus Christ. It distresses me when I hear people speaking more about the COVID-19 coronavirus than about their faith in Jesus Christ. It really concerns me. It concerns me why they, they, they keep on listening to the statistics, how many people have got the coronavirus, how many, many people died, how many people recovered, what the, and then where does Jesus fit in? Jesus is the healer. I haven't got enough time today to tell you how many healings that I have witnessed with my own eyes. Just down the road on that same farm, in a hut, a woman was struck down, according to her friends, dead when lightning hit her. And we prayed for her and God raised her up. That's a fact. And I can tell you something now. She's still alive and she's married and she's got children. Why do we give the devil so much glory? Why don't we start to concentrate on Emmanuel, God with us, the Messiah, the King of Kings. That is the most powerful testimony that you can ever hear. Jesus' testimony. He says, when you lift me up, he says, I will draw all men unto me, call upon me. And that's what I want to say to you today. Now, I want to read to you a letter that was found in an ancient monastery. Okay? Now, I don't know anything more than that. I'm going to read this letter to you. When I first read this letter, I started to cry. You see, Jesus to me is not someone who lives up in the sky. He's not some story that people talk about. Jesus is a person. I shared this with a, a prayer meeting on Zoom. And the one man from Israel, he's a pastor in Mount Carmel. His name is Peter. And he said, Angus, thank you. He said, we are always talking about the presence of God. But we don't often speak about the person of Jesus. Jesus is a person. By the way, he lived in Israel. He has got a family tree longer than anybody that's ever lived. Goes back to Adam. <clears throat> and before that, he said, before that, I am. Who's I am? That's Jesus. Okay. So he is a reality. He's not a Scotsman. 
He's not a South African. He's not a Zulu. He's not a, Ch a Chinese man. He is a Jew. And he is alive. And he's coming back sooner than you think. And he's coming back to take his people home. He is a man's man. You want to talk about a man that you can follow? A man that you can emulate? Well, his name is Jesus. He is the greatest man that has ever lived. Now listen to this account. This is a letter that was written by a, a Roman consul to his emperor. In the archives in Rome, there is a report written nearly 2,000 years ago by a Roman, Publius Lentulus, to his emperor Tiberius. It reads as follows. There has appeared in Palestine a man who is still living and whose power is extraordinary. He has the title given to him of great prophet. His disciples call him the son of God. He raises the dead and he heals all sorts of diseases. He is a tall, well-proportioned man and there is an air of severity in his countenance which at once attracts the love and reverence of those who see him. His hair is the color of new wine from the roots to the ears, and thence to the shoulders it curls and falls down to the lowest part of them. Upon the forehead it parts after the manner of the Nazarenes. He was a Nazarene. His forehead is flat and fair, his face is without blemish or defect and adorned with a graceful expression. His nose and mouth are very well proportioned. His beard is thick and the color of his hair. His eyes are gray and extremely lively. In his reproof, he is terrible. But in his exhortations and instructions, amiable and courteous. There is something wonderfully charming in his face with a mixture of gravity. He has never seen to laugh, but has been observed to weep. He is very straight in stature. His hands are large and spreading. His arms are very beautiful. He talks little, but with great quality. And he is the handsomest man in the world. His name is Jesus the Son of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for every single person watching this program that your reality would be recognized by every man, woman, boy, and girl because it's that recognition that will save us in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there we have it, boys. I hope you've prayed that prayer with me and I hope you really, really lean on Jesus. You know, He's so big, He's so strong, He's so gentle, He's so loving, He won't desert you. He's not a bully. He doesn't force Himself on you. He is so gentle and yet so strong. You know, they said Moses was the meekest man who ever lived. Now, Moses took a nation through the desert for 40 years. There was nothing soft about Moses, you see. But meekness is called controlled strength. There's nothing weak about Jesus, but He has controlled strength. I want to say to you that the Lord Jesus Christ is not coming soon. He is on His way, I tell you. And you need to be ready for that. Now, you need to stop going to every Tom, Dick, and Harry and getting advice. Do I sell? Do I buy? Do I leave my job? Do I find another one? Do I leave South Africa? Do I go somewhere else? Go to the man from Galilee. That's what I do. This is my agricultural manual. There it is. Go to him, and he will show you exactly what you need to do. But Angus, I haven't heard any answer. That is an answer. See? 
So in other words, if you haven't had an answer, keep doing what you're doing. And he will tell you when to buy, when to sell. That's how I've run this farm for years. Years and years. Now my boys are running the farms. He'll tell you what to plant, when to plant. And you know something else? <clears throat> He's such an amazing friend. He will not desert you. God bless you and enjoy your weekend together. Goodbye.